everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Yarn Curator Podcast. My name is Naomi and welcome to my space where I like to talk about knitting, spinning, sewing, and just crafty things in general, but this is predominantly a knitting based podcast here on YouTube. So for those of you who are returning viewers, welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. If you're a new viewer and just checking out the podcast for the first time, welcome to you as well. Um, I hope you like what you see. Yeah, so if you would like to follow me on social media, I am the Yarn Curator on Instagram. It is where I'm most active. I am also House of Cardigans on Ravelry, and then I do have a website, theyarncurator.com. It's where I mostly post show notes, things along those lines, uh, maybe some extra photos that don't make it into the podcast. If you like what you've seen so far, feel free to go ahead and subscribe, hit the thumbs up so you can stay up to date with the podcast. So welcome back everyone. I'm so happy you're here. It's been a while. I think the last time I sat down and formed a full podcast episode was the beginning of November, right before I left for my friend Amelia's wedding, uh, which was in Austin, Texas. I've been doing some little smaller other videos in between, but I haven't sat down and done the full shebang in a while. So if I'm a little rusty or out of practice, I apologize. I've sat down to film this like three times now. I've been like, oh yeah, I forgot to put that in my basket. And um, so yeah, I have a basket full of goodies to talk about with you guys. I gotta finish some finished objects, um, some acquisitions, works in progress, things along those lines. We will jump right in and I'll save kind of some of the chattery bit for the end. Excuse me, while it might be finally winter here in Florida, it does not mean it is not hot still. So I have water, and because I'm a glutton for punishment, I also have a cup of tea in one of my favorite mugs. It says I'd rather be hiking. It's from Rocky Mountain National Park. I used to live um, about two miles outside of the park, not the main entrance, but the wilderness portion where you're not allowed to take like heavy machinery, so it's a couple it was like 20 miles away from the main entrance. Anyways, one of my coworkers went to Rocky for the first time last summer and I watched her cat for her and she brought this mug back as a thank you present. And it's like my favorite coffee mug in the house because it holds a redonkulously large amount of liquid and it retains heat really well. So that combination is always a winning one in my book. But inside my mug, I am drinking some Yorkshire tea, their biscuit blend. I am lucky enough to live about two miles down the road now from a British import store. So I popped in there a couple weekends ago and saw this on the shelf and it's delicious. I should have also bought some Tim Tams to go with it. Um, I am coming to you guys this week from a new location. This is my front yard, kind of. The view, if you're sitting in our living room and looking out, is what you're seeing behind me. So I might pause randomly and I'll edit those out if my neighbors walk by and look at me like I'm a crazy person talking to a tripod in their front yard. <laughs> Today is Saturday, November 30th. I had originally planned to podcast Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving of this week, um, but I'll just be real with you guys and I don't feel like, or I'll talk real life with you guys. Sometimes I get hit really hard with our monthly courses and um, the pain can be really intense. And so like I was actually, before my husband came home from work and he brought me some lunch, I was actually shaking from the pain um, and I didn't feel like a normal functioning human being till about five o'clock that afternoon. So uh, making myself look A, not like death, uh, because I very much looked like someone who was pale and in pain, um, just wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> but I feel good today. I have weaned myself off of the steady stream of ibuprofen that I've been popping like candy for the last three-ish days. So yeah, we're all good to go. So we'll jump right in you guys with finished objects. The first one to start. So uh, if you've been here before, you'll know I've been knitting a sample for my local yarn shop called Stash A Place For Yarn. They're located in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and they asked me to knit a sample for them. So I finished this, I cast it off on Thanksgiving day. I still need to weave in my ends, but otherwise it is complete. So this is the Valan Sod Shawl. It's a pattern by Heidi Allander. And I knit this out of Manos del Uruguay in their Fino base. It's a wool silk blend. 
and yeah it's this this is not a color I would normally pick out for myself but it's this really pretty golden brown with kind of a green undertone to it and yeah it's pretty simple you do a garter tab cast on you increase in this kind of shallow crescent shape and then when it's the size you want you start doing this lace border at the bottom and then cast off <laughs> let me tell y'all i probably could have had this finished two three weeks ago except i made a monumental error do not make this mistake as me do not knit in an airport at five in the morning on three hours worth of sleep because when you do that when trying to knit lace you make a giant faff of it and have to tink back after so <clears throat> i took this as my travel knitting to texas with me and um my friend amelia had her wedding it was an evening wedding and i did not get back to my in-laws house where i was staying with them till about 12 30 1 in the morning because the wedding went to I went late. It, I believe it was 11, 11 30 when I was leaving the venue and then they lived about an hour north of where the venue was. So anyways, I got there. I had a red eye flight out of Austin at, I don't know, seven in the morning. It was something like that. So yeah, I only got about three hours worth of sleep because I went to bed around one after I finished packing up my suitcase and everything. And then my mother-in-law came and woke me up around four in the morning. So we could get to the airport with about two hours to spare was probably not necessary but it's fine better safe than start sorry so I was just starting this lace portion when I got to the airport don't do lace on three hours worth of sleep I read the chart wrong and so the laces worked using a series of two decreases and two yarn overs as you work across in the pattern I worked two decreases and only one yarn over per decrease so my stitch count was off so I tinked it all the way back re-knit this lace portion and I had started the second section when I realized a few days later that I had missed a lace row in here there's three it's a six row lace pattern so you know, you knit a row of lace, then you purl back, then you knit a row of lace, then you purl back, then you knit a row of lace and purl back. I had missed that last one and moved on to this second part of the repeat in the pattern. And <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys, if I was just knitting this for myself, I would have just left it and lived with it. But since I'm doing it for the shop and as a sample for them, I was like, all right, I have to rip this sucker back. And so I was debating if I wanted to try and rip back to right around here so I could work that last lace repeat. Ultimately, I decided it would just be better or easier to throw in a lifeline and rip back kind of around this area because since I had messed up this first lace row and tinked, it was a little wonky. I wasn't too sure if I had actually still worked it right with the rework. So I ripped back about four rows back from the lace border and re-knit those and I ended up increasing two extra times from what the pattern called for so this is a little bit bigger than the finished shawl um shown so I think it's really nice it's a nice shallow you know shawl perfect for somewhere like Florida where it doesn't get too hot but we do have some chilly mornings so you could throw it on still need to weave in my ends but details so yeah, it's a really enjoyable pattern. It's not too expensive on Ravelry. It's only two or three dollars for the pattern and it's great for using one skein. I still have probably a quarter of the ball left. I don't, I think I weighed it. I just don't remember what it weighed out of the 100 gram ball. One finished object, done, hooray. I was gonna drop this off today and check out their small business Saturday sale that they're having, but Quite frankly, I don't feel like dealing with the traffic and the crowds of kind of Black Friday weekend. And I know I'm going to go there Tuesday for midnight. And if something catches my eye at the yarn store, I will just buy it then at full price. I don't need it on sale. So that is it for finished knitting objects. I'm going to talk real quick spinning. I won't spend too long on this next one. 
So next up, I do have one finished thing of hand spun. So if you watched a couple videos back when I did a little spin along, this is the fiber that I was spinning if you want to hear more about it in depth. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch this though, this is yarn or fiber from a company called A Sheep at the Wheel. It's one of the local yarn stores I visited when I was in Austin and I've named the colorway Sunshine State of Mind after Florida. It reminds me um, kind of of Florida sunsets here. And this is knit to go in a fade from that tangerine into the raspberry, raspberry kind of sherbet color. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. And it's about 13 wraps per inch. It's DK weight and around 135 yards. It is a 50 gram skein. This is a 100% Coriadale. It's a little bit of a toothier yarn, but I don't say that in a negative way. It's just like a crispy, crunchy, but still really soft. And yeah, it should have some nice spring and bounce to it. I think it would make either a really cute might not be enough for a hat on its own, but if you knit your brim out of something else and then you could make the main body of the hat out of this or, you know, a shallow cowl or a pair of mitts would be really nice. Although that might be harder with the ombre to get a pair of mittens. So yeah, or even just, you know, mixing it into a project or a scrappy project. Um, but I'm really pleased with the way this came out and I've really been feeling spinning lately. I've been feeling like my knitting mojo has been a little bit low. I've been really struggling to find the motivation to work on projects and I'll talk more about that at the end and why I think that's the case. I'm sorry if I'm squinting as well. The sun's coming in right from here but it makes for good light. I'm gonna wait for my neighbor to drive by. So I don't have much in terms of whips to show you guys. Most of my attention has kind of gone towards one project but I have made some good progress on a couple other ones that you've all seen before. Nothing I'm going to show you is new or a new cast on but living in my fringe bag is the project that's getting most of my attention right now and that is the test knit I'm doing for Lisa Ross who is Paper Daisy Creations. It, the pattern itself is called Fade Into Advent and uh, she released it mid-November, so it is out if you want to, to go ahead and purchase it. But our test is due December 15th. So the last time we talked, I was down around here. Um, and so, yeah, it's growing. I've worked one repeat of this slip-stitched chevron. I've messed up somewhere in that repeat. I'm not sure where, but my stitch count was off on one side from the other side, so I'm not sure if I missed an increase or missed a decrease on a row, or maybe I accidentally decreased on one side of the shawl where I shouldn't have. So I've kind of fudged it, and I think it looks okay, and because of that, I think I'm a little off from where the pattern says you should be switching your colors. I'm not going to stress it because it's for me, I'm not gifting it to anyone. And so I'll know the mistakes are there, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me. And I've been having a bit of a think about this project. And uh, so the way it's knit is you cast on using a pinhole cast on, you work in the round for a while and then you divide half your stitches um, and work one half going this way and then you come back up, pick up the rest and then work it mirrored on the other side of the shawl. And it's intended to use uh, every scrap of yarn in an advent calendar that you would get for Christmas. So I've been having a bit of a think and my employer, um, which is a local government, they do um, what's called the Colors of Pinellas Art Show every year, and it's um, a juried art exhibition competition, uh, which includes work from county employees as well as their significant others uh, or family. I think this sends out to uh, whatever your extended family is considered under FEMLA, so like grandparents, parents, children, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. 
I don't think Femme was that broad, but this is. So anyways, they do an art competition every year. They actually didn't do it this year because I looked into it, into entering and only saw that they would start accepting submissions in 2020. So anyways, I submitted two things in 2018. Um, one was a hand spun, hand knit wall hanging that I just kind of made up. It was a scene of three purple llamas or alpacas. I just grabbed a random chart off of Ravelry and kind of made it up as I went. And that currently is like a table runner on my nightstand. It's a nice cute little decoration. Um, but for this, they have a couple different categories and you can enter into two categories. For that one, I entered it into the mixed media category and I hung it on a wooden hanger. Um, kind of a little tongue-in-cheek play on hanger and so that was my mixed media entry and then I also submitted my sunset highway sweater into the craft category and I got second place in mixed media so I'll take it anyways I am rambling all to say that I think I want to turn this into a wall hanging ever since I first saw it I thought like wow that would look really cool stretched out over a canvas kind of pinned around a canvas I've been debating if I just want to do half and kind of have um, kind of melt out of here and have one half going or if I want to do the whole thing. I think it'll be like stupidly large if I did the whole thing which is why I'm thinking about doing half because I think the scale will work a lot better. So I've been thinking about doing that and then I maybe hang it in my office switch up some of the art I have hanging in my office. Um, so that's kind of Another reason I haven't really been sweating some of the mistakes I've been making in this because I think I'm going to turn it into wall art. Um, I don't think I'm actually going to wear it as a gigantic shawl because once again, Florida, and I don't travel enough to justify having a gigantic shawl. So I do indeed have a fire ant on me. That is going to welt up later and turn into a nice pus filled boil blister. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this is the progress I've made. I believe I'm on color eight right now, and I'm about to transition into color nine. Yes, I have seven and eight working on my needles right now. I have one more row to work of color seven, then I'll cut that and work in color nine. I would not say it's a beginner pattern. A beginner could do this pattern, but you would probably want to watch some YouTube tutorials while working on it. But yeah, I think the colors are blending really nice. I'll hold that up. Oh, and I forgot to mention when I first started talking about this, I am using yarn from last year's advent calendar. It's hand dyed by my sister Zoe, who owns the Felicity Yarn Studio shop on Etsy. She also has her own podcast here on YouTube. Go check it out. Um, so last year she dyed up kind of a neon fade for her advent calendars and yeah I've been hanging on to it originally I was thinking I was going to do the dust of snow wrap by Helen Stewart however when I saw this pattern pop up I just thought oh I have to knit that <laughs> and so I jumped on it so yeah it's fading really really nice kind of from blue into green the next section is going to move into yellows and then I go. I think it goes yellows into pinks into purple I believe is how the fade progression works so I'm really pleased with it I think it's going to make a really cool wall hanging um so yeah that is my test knit and it's getting to be a little bit of a slog I don't know I've kind of I've kind of lost some of my knitting mojo to work on it, but I'm going to keep going. I've never missed a testing deadline before. That is a record that I would like to keep. <laughs> and so, yeah, otherwise, and I really do want to hang this in my office. I think it'll look really nice in there when it's completed. So that is my test knit. I did, um, after I finished my shop sample, I did, I worked on my test knit a little bit and then I was like, I think I need a break because I've kind of been working on it non-stop and by non-stop I mean the little bit of time that I've forced myself to knit lately. I've been forcing myself to work on that and that might be part of why my knitting mojo is down. I, you shouldn't have to force yourself to work on projects that you're not feeling. 
that might be part of the problem as well. But like I said, I'm gonna shift back onto it. I've gotten a little bit of a palette cleanser the last day or two with another project that I'll show you guys here in a second. Um, I'm just briefly gonna do an honorable mention of um, my Novelli tea, which I still have not divided the sleeves for, but it has grown significantly since the last time it made an appearance here on the podcast. So I don't know if you can see where that tie stitch marker is hanging right here. That is where I was the last time I spoke with you. So knit probably, ooh, I'm about to lose stitches. I have knit, I would say a good five or six inches since then. I think I only need to do about one, maybe two more inches on the body. Honestly, I could divide it now and it would be a little bit shorter than I would intend it to, but I'm trying to be patient and just put in the few extra rows so it is the length that I desire. It is almost there. It's almost there. This yarn is so fine though. I feel like it takes, it's taking forever. So I'm knitting this out of Holst um, in their Coast Base, which is a 50-50 blend of lamb's wool and cotton. It'll be incredibly light. It'll be perfect for here because it is such a fine yarn. It's really light. I think it'll be really breathable. And yeah, I'm excited to divide. I was just looking before I came out to film. I did lose a few stitches. Um, before I came out to film, I um, was looking through my closet to see if I had a good tee to put on. And really for knitted tees, I only have my Tanya and my Mary Mietmo. And um, not in love with my Mary Mietmo in terms of how it fits. I really need to rip out the sleeves and re-knit those. So one day when I care enough to do that. So the only other whip I have to show you guys in terms of knitting, I do have a little bit of a spinning whip to show you. Um, so, <laughs> so my husband is a huge Buffalo Bills fan and they played on Thanksgiving day. And so we were sitting down in the first quarter and I was working on my test knit, the fade into advent and, um, <laughs> They were playing the Cowboys, which is like a huge rival. Apparently the Cowboys beat them like four Super Bowls in a row in the 90s. And this was a tragic thing for my husband being a Buffalo Bills fan, living in Corpus Christi, Texas at the time. And so he looked at me and he's like, baby, you're gonna have to knit something else because that's bringing bad juju to this game. And that was mostly a joke. And, but I wasn't feeling that anyways. And I was like, maybe it's a sign I should switch. So I picked back up my Flax Light, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I am so happy I did. It has done everything for my knitting mojo. I haven't stopped working on it since Thanksgiving. When I picked it up, I hadn't yet divided my sleeves. So I was still, Let's see, I was right around here, um, Thanksgiving day, and then I've worked on this yesterday. I divided my sleeves off in the morning. We did go out and brave a little bit of the Black Friday crowds. We like to check out Lowe's and Home Depot for what they have, you know, in terms of things we can pick up for the house here. Last year we got a grill. This year nothing really struck our fancy. I came home with plants. That's what we came home with was plants not on sale. But I got a, a new Christmas cactus that's white. I'm really excited about that. And then we got a tropical fern, which is, or not a tropical fern, a tropical pine tree. It's actually not a genus of the pine family, but it's really cute and it's a sustainable Christmas tree. You keep it as an indoor house plant throughout the year. So I'm excited. Um, it's our forever Christmas tree. So anyways, I was, yeah, up above, just a little bit above the sleeves before we last spoke. So I divided those off and then I started working in my second color. So if you've watched before, you'll know I'm knitting this as a fade. Uh, the color on top here is by Woolen Boone and her Boone Sock Base in the Ambrosia Salad colorway. On the bottom is Ching Fiber and it's in her MCN Base. And I believe the colorway is called Smudge. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then the third color will fade into La Bien Me, the Peach Pon Pon Base. Uh, which is I think a 75-25 blend, but I'm really excited. So this is where I started blending in my colors. I worked that for about two, three inches, and then now I am working 
this third section of the body. It's really nice to see it out in the natural light because I've just been seeing it in the house so far and I think it fades really well. So we'll start at the top there and then work our way up. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. I was, before I came out to film, having a little bit of a debate if I want to go ahead and start blending in the La Bien Amy and just work a really long fade of that with the Qing fiber. That way it looks a little more natural. I think I'm going to knit a little bit more of the Qing. So I started working on its own. I believe that little bit of green right there is the last of the ambrosia salad. So I think I'm going to knit about one more inch and then I'll probably start fading it in. The way I worked my fade is I didn't really follow a pattern or any rhyme or reason. I think fades work best when you work them randomly. So I started it by doing, I did one row of the Qing, then one row of the Woolen Boon, and then I think I did two rows of Woolen Boon, then one row of Qing, then another row, and I just kind of made it up as I went. Two, one, um, there were a few times I did three rows of one color, that way, you know, it really looks like it's blending together and it doesn't look like stripes. I feel like sometimes when uh, designers do fades, it looks really stripey. And so I didn't want that effect. So I just went for something a little bit more random. And then um, I could have kept going with the Woolen Boon, but I used a little over 80 grams for this top portion of the body. So I wanted to make sure I still had some for the sleeves. So what I'm gonna do, I believe it's right around 20 grams that I have left in that ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'll re-cake the ball and then I'll divide it in half and then I will just use 10 grams for each sleeve and whatever is left is left. I am gonna do three quarter length sleeves on this because that's what I prefer. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna carry this garter stitch detail on the sleeves down them. I don't know if that'll look funny ending right there or if it'll look funny ending right here. So if you have an opinion, drop it down below. Let me know what you think. But yeah, I'm really pleased with the way this is knitting up. I could not be happier. I stayed up till past midnight last night working on this. I just did not want to put it down. And this is what I've done literally in like six or seven hours. It's just been exactly what I needed. Uh, dividing the sleeves and then just going on to Body Island. It's like coming home to an old friend. You know what I mean? It's comfortable. It's familiar. The weight of the yarn just felt perfect in my hands. And so, yeah, I just, I'm really pleased. And I'm like living for uh, some of these pops of speckled colors in here. I don't know if you can see that blue right there gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And I could not be happier. I could not be happier with this. That is what's kind of stolen my love. I think what I'm going to do is continue to knit on that today. And then uh, I work Sunday through Thursdays. So Sunday through Thursday this week, I'm going to go back to the test knit. And then I will save that for my weekend treat. And I'm really pleased with it. Really pleased with how it turned out. That is it for my knitting whips. I do have one spinning whip to talk to you guys about. And once again, if you watched my 20 questions video, um, which I got tagged in by Tammy of Twisted Stitches, you will have seen me working on spinning up a little bit of this braid. But I finished spinning both halves of my braid. So it was by uh, Malabrigo and their Noob, which is their dyed roving. And I believe the colorway is called Baya Electrica. So that is what that looks like. I'm really pleased. I think I did pretty even singles. Oh, hang on. So yeah, that is what that looks like. I'll wrap it around my finger so you can get an idea of how thin it is. So this fiber, when I was spinning it, it was a little bit compact and a little bit felted. I think it was a little old, had sat in storage for a while and getting these intense colors, they probably used a slightly higher heat. So when I initially started spinning it, it was kind of a pain in the arse to draft. And so what I did was I 
I folded in half lengthwise and divided my braid in half and then I took each half and I stripped it down to 16 to 20 really thin strips of fiber and that made drafting a lot easier. It also meant that I got a really fine single out of it and yeah it has these really nice chunks of color repeats in it between kind of that raspberry to periwinkle to a darker purple in there. So I plan on plying these together this week, uh, maybe this afternoon, maybe tomorrow night, and I do think I'm going to make another video of that plying process. I think I'm going to make a little how-to on how I ply um, because my sister Zoe is just learning how to spin and I know she's watched some videos and plied some yarn herself. I think I do it a little bit differently from what I've seen on the internet and what I've seen you know, the little bit that she sent me in video or I've watched of her videos of her plying. So I am going to make that for her primarily, but if it benefits anyone else, hopefully it will be of use. And so, yeah, stay tuned for that, but I'm excited for these. I, I finished spinning this and then I have, I have a few other similar kind of pink, purple uh, caches of fiber in my collection right now. So I really want to do a hand spun Vertices Unite. I think that'll be really pretty. And so I think it'll be a great way to use up hand spun as well, even if every section doesn't follow Steven's pattern exactly. You know, I might need more hand spun, individual hand spun skeins than that pattern calls for because of yardage but I think it'll be a great way to use up hand spun. And since I've been doing a lot of fingering weights, I think it'll be good. So I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, that's kind of what I've been spinning in mind with a few of my spins lately. That is it for works in progress, knitting and spinning related. So anyways, enough with the rambling stuff. I just have a little bit more to show you guys and that is some acquisitions. And when I was in Texas, I hit three local yarn stores. Um, I did make a little video of that. So yeah, what I picked up at the first store was called the Knitting Cup. It's a knitting tea store. So I got two loose leaf teas there, but I also picked up one skein of yarn from a local dyer who lives in Austin called Moon Tower Dye Works. And this is on her Triton sock weight base. It's 7525 Merino Nylon. 460 yards, 100 grams, and the colorway is called Caverns of Tomorrow. It's this really light lavender purple with uh, gold and blue and kind of Merlot and darker indigo purple speckles. It's really pretty. And then um, the shop owner showed me, I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there, but inside every label, she writes a little hand wrote skein. So this said this colorway was named for a lyric from the Bright Eyes song at the bottom of everything, which I did not realize that. My husband's actually a huge Bright Eyes fan, so that, that fits. So I really, really love this. Um, you can really see a gorgeous close-up of those speckles there. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I was actually playing around with it in my stash and it might work as a kind of a pink purple fade. So we'll see. Um, then we did go to A Sheep at the Wheel, which is where I picked up the bat to do the hand spun that I already showed you guys. And then uh, last but not least, I went to the awesome yarn store, Hill Country Weavers. I've wanted to go there, you know, ever since I learned about them a few years ago. And they had one of the yarns that I had wanted to buy in Scotland and I didn't because the day that we were at the festival I was worried about spending money. For whatever reason we didn't pull the trigger on it and kind of have been regretting that choice ever since. And so I picked up five skeins of Bishas e Bushes. I'll just get one out to show you guys. I got in this really pretty uh, turquoise colorway. It's kind of a a really pretty aquamarine color. I normally go for a kind of minty greens, but this is more on the blue end. I absolutely love it. So this is their Le Petite Lamb's Wool. It's a 50 gram ball, 270 yards. 
And yeah, and the turquoise colorway. So I got five skeins of this. I have agreed to do another test knit starting in the new year for Amy, who is the Little, Little Tailoress podcast on YouTube. Um, and she also does some pattern designing. So she has a new sweater coming up that I saw um, that I think this will be perfect for. But I love it. And when I saw it, I had to get it. And yeah, it's really reasonably priced. It's only $12.75 um, a skein. So, you know, not bad for a sweater's quantity. The day of the wedding, we were all hanging out at Amelia's house getting ready. Like I said, the wedding wasn't until 6 and they had everyone arriving at their house around 10 that morning. So I left my in-laws in a little bit of a frazzle because I had to pick up the donuts, which was what they had in, instead of a cake. So I needed to pick up the donuts. In the process of focusing on getting the donuts, I left my knitting at my in-laws house. So I went back to Hill Country Weavers and I was like, you know what, we're going to have like six hours where we're hanging around the house waiting for everything to take place so I was like let me just go ahead and buy a project to work on there and I had said I wanted to knit something for my mother-in-law for you know being so generous with her time and helping me out with everything prior to the wedding so I picked up another ball of beaches and bushes to make her a hat and then never cast it on so this is what it looks like it is in this really pretty heathered green base. Um, I think it'll look really nice on her. I think it'll look really pretty with her eye color. So yeah, I am planning on either knitting the the diode hat, um, which is this really cute bobbled hat um, out of this, or probably something by Tin Can Knits. I've knit their antler hat before, but that's a, a worsted bulky weight, and this is more of a fingering. So I need to do a little bit of a search, but I've keep coming back to the diode hat so I think that's what I'm going to make her out of this. On to kind of life. It's been a really weird month for me because I have been in and out of my office so much. So at the end of October I flew out for SAF then I came back and like two weeks later I flew out for Amelia's wedding and then there was the holiday weekend and now there's Thanksgiving so I have worked like one full week in November which has been awesome but at the same time like my schedule feels really off I don't feel like I'm in my normal routine and I've been out of my routine for like a month now so I think that's part of what's been throwing me off and then also with all the traveling and the events and things along those lines um I don't know if any of you guys watch the Earth Tones Girl podcast uh, but her most recent one titled Quiet kind of talks about being an introvert in an extroverted world and how um, being an introvert and going to events like hers was Rhinebeck, but going to events like festivals or things along those lines can really drain you if you're an introverted person. And she just like watching her podcast made me go like, oh, that is probably part of why I feel off. Um, two weekends ago, Gigi of Gigi Made It came down to Florida. She did an event at Four Pearls, which is a yarn shop in the Winter Haven area. It's about two hours from where I live. And I was gung-ho ready to go to that. And like, like I was in the car, I was gonna film a little vlog of going there, but it was the weekend after the wedding. And I got in my car and I was like, I can't do it. I'm too tired. I am exhausted. I just want to stay home. Just like I need like some quiet downtime because it had just been like staff, work, wedding, work, you know, and it was it was drained. And, you know, in her podcast, she talks about you have to be as an introvert, you have to be okay saying no to well, this was particularly with the holidays to that holiday party or saying no to obligations or saying you know you just have to be okay taking a step back and so i was in my car i was leaving and i texted my husband and i was like i think i'm gonna stay home but i'm gonna run and grab us some lunch so i went and got us some cuban sandwiches that's when i stopped in the london import store which is next to a really good italian deli so I picked us up some cannolis, some, they make a really good Cuban sandwich there, and just came home and had a quiet day, and it was just what I needed to kind of 
reset and recharge and yeah self care is important you guys take care of yourself take care of your mental state as well as your physical health yeah that podcast really struck a chord with me and if you're willing to sit through the 20 30 minutes or so of her talking about you know being an introvert and taking care of yourself and realizing that you know you don't have to be on go all the time you know, it, it was really like, oh, maybe that is why I'm so tired and why I'm so exhausted and a little bit moody when people try to approach me and talk to me at work. It's because I just spent, you know, three days at a fiber festival with my mom and my sister the whole time. And I love spending time with them. Don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, there was no alone time, you know, and then you jump back into work and then you know, at the wedding, I spent time with my in-laws because I felt like while I was with them, I needed to, you know, enjoy quality time with them. And then it would jump into a wedding event where there'd be 20, 30 people um, and, you know, feeling like you need to catch up with these friends you haven't seen in literally a decade, some of them. So yeah, I just came back really drained. And after watching her podcast, it really validated that decision to stay home and not go to Four Pearls. So yeah, that's that. I, I just went back to knit, knit night at my local yarn store for the first time in like a month and a half because it's been so busy. So that was really nice to sit and just socialize with a group of people, talk about knitting, all of that good stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what's going on. I'm not going to talk about work too much other than to say we have been in uh, full on Christmas decorating mode and transitioning out of hurricane season. So every year at the start of hurricane season, we put these hurricane shutters on all of our houses. They stay up through the summer because uh, it's a two day process to hang the shutters and we have to rent a mechanical lift to get the shutters on second story windows. And so it's part of our hurricane plan. And there's other things that we have to do when we're actually under a watch or a warning. And so by doing that at the start of the season, it really frees up time to do the things that are essential when a storm approaches. But that means at the end of hurricane season, it all gets to come down. So we have been de-hurricaning the museum while also simultaneously Christmas decorating, um, which actually takes much longer. I think my coworker who was supervising it this year took her about two and a half weeks of of getting everything decorated and she was not doing it alone it was bringing in volunteer groups to come in um, sorting through decorations deploying them and all of that good stuff so I will be doing vlogmas this year I don't know if it's going to be daily vlogs or kind of mini compilations of two or three four days at a time haven't really figured it out yet we'll see how much of a burden it becomes but you guys will be seeing some shots of the museum all gussied up in its Christmas decorations. And yeah, I'm really excited to show that to you guys as well as getting our house ready. My parents will be coming um, December 23rd. They will be arriving and parking their RV in our driveway. So gotta get the house ready for them. My husband just got home from work. So that concludes everything for today, you guys. Um, Thank you so much for watching and sticking with it. If you liked today's episode, feel free to hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And till next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Um, I hope to see you tomorrow for the start of Vlogtober. So yeah, have a great one, you guys, and have fun curating your stash. Till next time, bye. Before I went to Texas, I started the lake. No, I had just gotten to the point where you start the lake. And I'm just gonna wait for my neighbor to drive their car full of junk down the road. Random ass guy on a scooter.